Hi, I'm Ozzy Hall. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Today's video focuses on a third-party module for the Behringer System 55. Before we go into the details, let me add some background for context. The four-pole, 24 dB per octave, low-pass filter is far and away the most common filter in analog synthesis. The Moog transistor ladder filter is the best known of these low-pass filters. The original Moog 904A filter was a four-pole, 24 dB per octave, voltage-controlled, low-pass filter with resonance. It was released as part of the Moog modular system in the mid-1960s. The Moog System 55 contains a 904A low-pass filter as well as a number of additional filters. The 904B high-pass filter was released as a companion filter to the 904A. This is a four-pole, 24 dB per octave, voltage-controlled high-pass filter without resonance. Both the 904A and 904B designs share the same patent. See a link in the description. The Moog Modular Series added a 904C filter coupler module which is not found in the Behringer System 55. This module centralized control and configuration management of the 904A and 904B filters to implement both band pass and band reject filter responses. The band reject response is also called a notch filter. The output of the 904C filter coupler is different from the common state variable filters which have high pass, low pass, and band pass filter outputs. First, the slope is different. The basic state variable filters have a low pass and high pass filter slope of 12 dB per octave. The band pass filter slope is 6 dB per octave. By contrast, the 904A and B have a sharper response of 24 dB per octave for the high pass and low pass outputs. The 904C band pass slope is 12 dB per octave. Second, the 904A low pass and 904B high pass can have different cutoff frequencies. In a state variable filter, there is only a single cutoff frequency. The 904C provides voltage control of the cutoff of both filters with a single center frequency control knob as well as CV input jacks. It also allows voltage control of the bandwidth, again with a knob and a CV input. I built this 904C module using the panel and circuit boards that I got from Fitzgrave UK.com. See a link in the description. I also got a few hard to find items such as the rotary switch and chicken head knob from Fitzgrave. I also purchased daughter boards for installing on the back of the 904A and 904B modules from Behringer. The remaining items I purchased from Mouser.com and TataElectronics.com. I wanted to give a shout out to Mark Graves of Fitzgrave Synthesis. I built the 904C module from a partial kit. I had a little difficulty because of some of the parts that I purchased that were the incorrect part. Mark bent over backwards to help me get through the process of getting this unit assembled properly and tested. Mark. I thank you so much for all of your help and persistence in getting this done. Now let's continue with the video. If you're not comfortable soldering or just don't have the time, check AmSense. They may have an available 904C and perhaps 904A and 904B modules. See a link to their website in the description. Mark Graves of Fitzgrave has an excellent video on the basics of using the 904 A, B, and C modules. See the link above for that video. It would be very helpful in following the examples in this video. I'll review the patching at the end of the video. Let me just mention that you should not use the inputs of the 904 A 
in 904B modules unless the 904C rotary switch is in the off position. Now let's explore the sounds made possible with the 904 A, B, and C trio of modules in the Behringer System 55. So let's explore the high pass filter, the low pass filter, and the two combined with the filter coupler. Let's take a step back and look at the overall patch that we've got. This is the stock mini Moog patching and we've got three oscillators going into a mixer and the output of the mixer is right now going into the input of the low pass filter and the low pass filter is going into the VCA which is going out and this is what you hear. So we can change the amount of resonance and that's easy to hear. The next thing we want to do is do this same setup with the high pass filter. So now we've repatched our audio is going into the high pass filter and coming out and going into the VCA. So let's hear that filter sweep again with the high pass filter. So we've reconfigured, we're in band pass mode, all the signal in, signal out, and control signals are going through this filter coupler. And we have set the frequency for both filters per the instructions. And we're going to do a filter sweep. Listen to that. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to turn up the sustain so it's static at that point and you can see that we've got control of both filters right here and then we can change the bandwidth as well. Counterclockwise gives it a tighter bandwidth and clockwise gives it a broader bandwidth. So that we can hear it a little bit better, I'm going to raise the resonance on the low pass filter. And you can hear that the filter has gone almost out of audio range on the low pass. And as we lower the sustain, it will complete the cycle. Go down an octave. And go a little bit higher. And since our envelope generator is going through this attenuverter, we can change the range of the sweep here. So that's the bandpass configuration. So I've switched to the band reject mode and I've got one other change and that is I'm going to turn on this LFO but first let's just hear a sweep from the envelope generator now let's turn on the LFO and we get our phaser sound Let's try up an octave. I've got a pretty tight bandwidth here. If we open it up a little bit, the sound will change.
You get a better response from a tighter bandwidth. It gives more of a phasing effect. Now let's do one other change and add more resonance to the patch. And let's raise the frequency. And sweep the bandwidth. And let's speed up the modulation. So that's the band reject mode. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. In conclusion, the 904C filter coupler allows you to manage the bandwidth and the frequency of both the high pass filter and the low pass filter. It offers a band pass mode and a band reject mode. What separates this from a standard state variable filter, which has a band pass mode, is that both the high pass and the low pass are 24 dB per octave slopes, which yields a tighter 12 dB per octave band pass slope. In addition to the tighter slope, you have the flexibility of adjusting the bandwidth. You can even adjust it with a control voltage at this jack right here. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching.